Greetings, this is Professor Lazarus and in this video lecture we will be talking about calculations involving cost of goods manufactured as well as cost of goods sold in a manufacturing environment. However, before I get into the numbers, I will give you a minute to jot down some of the figures in the whiteboard behind me. So I will step aside and come right back. Okay, now that you've had a chance to look at the numbers, let's get right into them. Let's assume that we are all accountants for Morgana Manufacturing Company and that we manufacture high quality furniture like tables, etc. As in any manufacturing process, to manufacture any product, you need raw materials. So let's assume that we have uh, a couple of buildings as part of our manufacturing facility. The first building is building number one, and I call this our raw materials warehouse. Now, what goes into raw materials? As an example, hypothetically in this case, let's assume our raw materials are made up of wood, nails and glue to make our table. Wood would be an example of a direct material and nails and glue would be examples of indirect materials. However, all of these three materials would be stored in our raw materials warehouse. Now from an accounting standpoint, I'm going to show you first how to calculate the direct materials used in the production process during this period of time. So we start off with our beginning direct materials inventory. And if you recall, the ending inventory of one month becomes the beginning inventory of the next month. So this is our beginning direct materials inventory of $1,000. Now to this, we are going to add any new purchases that we would have made this month of our wood direct material. So we've negotiated, we've checked out different suppliers, negotiated with different suppliers and ultimately have chosen one supplier to buy our wood from and so in this month we have purchased two thousand dollars of wood now in addition to the base purchase cost it also cost us transportation fees to bring the wood over to our factory and that those transportation costs we classify them as freight in and they are an integral cost of purchasing this direct material and in, in this case it's five hundred dollars so this gives us a total of $3,500 of direct materials available for usage in the production process this month. Now, during the month, raw materials, including this direct materials of wood, is being used constantly in the production process. How do we know how much of direct materials we have used? One way to do that is at the end of the month, we calculate how much of 
direct materials do we have left? And in this example, we have $1,900 of direct materials left at the end of the month. So earlier we had $3,500 of direct materials available. Now we only have $1,900. So obviously the difference between the two, which is $1,600. $1,600 would be the amount of direct materials used in the production process this period of time, assuming of course that there was no theft, no spoilage, etc. So that's the way we would calculate the direct materials used, in this case $1,600. Now where does this information go? To understand where the $1,600 fits in, we let, next look at the work in process account. Well before we look at the work in process account, let's look down here where I have building number two, the plant. So earlier we had building number one, the raw materials warehouse, now we have building number two. So visualize this folks, the materials are moving from building number one, raw materials warehouse, into building number two, plant. For accounting purposes, we generally don't have an account called plant, but we have an account called work in process. So work in process very broadly represents all of the activity that takes place physically in the plant. One way to understand work in process is it is the value of those partially finished goods. Now if you recall, manufacturing is a continuous process. So at the end of any given month, you may have a number of partially finished furniture. That becomes your work in process. So in this example, our beginning work in process inventory is $5,000. To that, we add the direct, we, to that we add the product cost of this month. The product cost, if you recall from an earlier discussion, is made up of three components, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So in this example, we have $1,600 of direct materials used. Recall we did the calculations a minute back on this number. Then we have direct labor of $3,000. Where do we get this? Well, there are multiple sources in the real world as to where you can pick up this information from. One possible source would be the timesheets of the factory workers that are directly involved in the production process. That's $3,000 in this example. Next, we look at the manufacturing overhead. Now you may recall from an earlier discussion, manufacturing overhead are all of those factory rated costs that are not classified as direct materials and not classified as direct labor. So again, any factory cost that is not direct materials and not direct labor would be then by default a manufacturing factory overhead cost. Some examples, can you think of some examples of factory overhead? How about factory utilities or factory insurance? or factory property taxes, factory janitorial services, factory equipment depreciation, and on and on and on. Factory supervisor salary, that would be an indirect labor which is also part of your factory overhead. So in this example, we have $4,400 of manufacturing overhead. So when we add up our beginning work in process to the direct materials used, to the direct labor, and then the manufacturing overhead, we end up with total manufacturing costs to be accounted for of $14,000. Then, fast forward to the end of the month. End of the month, we take a inventory again of our partially finished products. That's our ending work in process inventory. In this example, our ending work in process inventory is valued at $2,500. So when you take the difference then between the total manufacturing cost to be accounted for less your ending work in process inventory of 2500 you end up with your cost of goods manufactured of $11,500. Cost of goods manufactured, let's try to understand what do we mean by this, by this uh, term, cost of goods, that this is your cost of the goods that have been fully finished. Now what happens when your goods are fully finished? Remember this building number two is your plant? Well once your goods, your furniture is fully finished, it moves to the next building, building number three. And building number three, we call that your finished goods warehouse. So this is where the merchandise is stored, waiting to be sold to a customer. So the cost of goods manufactured goes right into the next set of calculations. So here we have beginning finished goods inventory of $1,800. And then during this month, we get a new batch of goods that were fully manufactured in the amount of 11,500 that we just finished calculating earlier. So this gives us cost of goods available for 13,300. That's your beginning 
finished goods inventory plus your cost of goods manufactured. Now during the month, you're selling some of this merchandise to your customers. Well, what is your cost of this merchandise that you have sold? To get to that, we fast forward to the end of the month and we take another inventory of our finished goods. In this example, our ending finished goods inventory is $3,000. Now recall we had $13,300 of finished goods available for sale to our customers. We only have $3,000 left at the end of the month of these finished goods. So the difference between the two, that's $10,300. This represents our cost of the goods that we sold. We call this cost of goods sold. So this would be the calculations for both the cost of goods manufactured and then the cost of goods sold. But please don't confuse the cost of goods sold with the sales. So for instance, hypothetically, if I said Morgana Manufacturing Company's policy is to sell everything at double its cost, then in this period of time, what would be our sales? Remember, our cost is 10,300, our cost of what we sold. So our sales would be double that number, which is $20,600. So remember the relationship between sales and then cost of goods sold. So, so again, we have three buildings. Building one, the raw materials warehouse, where the materials flows into building number two, which is our plant. And then from the plant, once the goods are fully finished, they flow into building number three, which is our finished goods warehouse. So this gives you uh, an overview of the discussion of these different terms and how we do the calculations. And Rather than putting all of this in one schedule, I broke it out into smaller bite-sized pieces to help you. So this wraps up our discussion and we will continue a little bit more on the cost of goods manufactured and how it flows into the financial statements in part two of this discussion. So this is Professor Lazarus signing off. And as I always like to say, we accountants work our assets off. Thank you.